So I'm Megan Bennett Burks, and I'm with Ron Edwards today. Um, we're going to see how this goes because I am recording it on my iPad Pro, which I've never tried for this purpose before. Be an interesting endeavor at the very least. So, um, mind giving me a, a little brief introduction of yourself? Oh, well, um, first of all, um, although American born and raised, I now live in Sweden. So you are now looking into the Swedish evening. And then also I have been involved in role playing since the 70s and have been publishing games since the late 90s. So uh, I've done plenty of things with that, a bunch of game titles. Um, I find the litany of awards and things embarrassing, um, but I really, my big things historically have been creator ownership. So whether you call it DIY or independence or indie or whatever, but it's economic. You, you make it, you own it, work with it from there. Um, and probably the other big thing that I'm associated with in people's minds anyway is The Forge, which is a website that I co-founded and ran, moderated basically, for 12 years. Um, and so now... Um, my company is Adept Play here in Sweden, and it is, if you will, sort of a forge fun sub forge subset fun, aiming more at talking things over and sharing what we like in games and stuff like that. Um, now that independent ownership is kind of much more standard than it used to be, I figure that's not really the fight anymore. So, so besides that, um, I'm actually pretty curious about the creative process right. and uh, independent ownership of your creations and whatnot. Have there been any other ways that really stand out to you that that has changed over the past maybe decade or two? Well, here the, the, the is sort of a grim story, in my opinion, because uh, for a brief period, it seemed as though, you know, the, the heavens had opened and the stranglehold of the distribution system of getting books into stores was mm -hmm. broken, which was a really dysfunctional situation. I'm not saying it is by definition broken to have a distribution chain, but the system that was in place was very definitely so. And um, really, I think, had a very damaging effect on the hobby as a whole insofar as we can talk about, you know, the hobby and what's good for it and all that. But the uh, situation in, say, 2002 seemed like everything was just amazing. You know, anybody, yeah. anybody could get it up there. Anybody could sell it to anybody. PayPal was, you know, brand new. Google was, mm -hmm. you know, was barely new. Um, there, was, there was no social media. So I guess technically back then it was all dark web. We, we just called it the Internet. But there was no, there was no sort of special personalized platform that you, you know, uh -huh. interacted and got your notifications in or anything like that. So, and there was an advertising was so badly done, it pretty much didn't exist in any way. I mean, Amazon Movie Review Query Engine, all of these were real straightforward, like one click, find your thing, buy it, read it, done. You know, they weren't these environments. Well, anyway, so I'm sounding old. What I really mean is that at the time, it seemed as though it was the science fiction, uh, no more scarcity, you know, leveling situation. Um, and I think even though sort of on paper, crowdfunding seems like it would be even more of the same leveling and sharing and customer and creator are pretty much the same. They're just buddies, you know, for this particular transaction. Um, and that they might as well just be customer and creator on the opposite sides tomorrow, right? Every, it's cool, right? It's like village, village economy of use and need and fun rather than, you know, Oh, yeah. You know, that, that's what it seemed like. But crowdfunding, I think, and partly is due to just the details of Kickstarter, mm -hmm. um, totally has had the opposite effect. It's actually, for role-playing, put us right back in the bad place. 
And um, and I think that's a terrible thing. I mean, I don't even get my role-playing games off, off Kickstarter anymore. For a while, I was a, a happy, loyal backer of, you know, the new way to get them. And now I'm like, no way. I'm sick of getting another 60% done game in terms of design. I feel torn on, on crowdfunding. Um, part of me likes it because I have had some success with it. But, yeah, me too. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, the whole process feels a lot like what I witnessed with music, which, um, you know, I was a lot more involved with for a while. Tell me about uh, that specifically. Like, what so, was it yeah. with music? Because I don't know. Yeah, yeah. It, it's exactly the same thing. There was a period of time where people were like, the record industries are dying. Right. We're going to take control of our own music and we're going to popularize it. Make itself. it, download it, play it, anybody, Fun. everybody. Yeah. yeah of money without having to you know worry about the fact it's just royalties and the, the man gets a big cut mm -hmm. yeah no no that's that's not how it works yeah I'm, you're superbly a good businessman and lucky well my frustration with role-playing games in specific is two things that came back with and part of it as i say is not crowdfunding I Bird is making a lot of noise. That's okay. Too. I was wondering what the. I mean, I wonder were you a robot and getting squeaky or something, you know? <laughs> but the um, the the thing with crowdfunding is, in and of itself, that concept I don't think is the the issue or the problem. And if anything, is a lot better, more good than it's bad. But if we look at the specific details of Kickstarter and what I guess it was originally designed for which was more for an engineering or product widgetry kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And so there was no way that you, uh, I mean, there's no way you could do that without a deadline. So a deadline was part of it. Yeah. And also, I think a lot of, if I really cast my mind back over 10 years ago, what was the assumption of the way Kickstarter was done? That you would produce a prototype. Right. That the idea was I have an idea for a widget. I need some venture capital and I'm going to make a prototype. So you have helped me bump into the the player status because yeah. you know, I've got a thing and I can go and like work on it now and take mm -hmm. it from here. And so a lot of the rewards back then and everything, as I recall, had nothing to do with actually getting the done thing. You weren't ordering yeah. a product. You might huh. get you might get something right. You might get yeah. one of the prototype you might get a prototype but or something but it wasn't the same as ordering a product like a catalog and now it is but very you're much lucky you get it ever well that's true too i mean it kind of goes up and down i i find myself if you've you've been on both sides of the kickstarter yeah. process and you know as well as i do that as soon as you do it yourself your sympathy for the entitled backer drops sharply you know I, I, in many ways, I totally get that, you know, you back something in good faith and you don't get it and you're like, ah, well, shit, I threw it away. But on the other hand, being on the other side of that, and I don't mean, I, I yeah. don't mean stiffing back no. specifically, but I mean, just not meeting their expectations. Um, it's, you kind of want to say, you know, really, I wish I hadn't done this. I really, I really wish I just put it up on the shelves and you could have bought it or not. Yeah. Um, and I've done and, that too. Yeah. Oh, it saves you a, a, a lot of, uh, you know, financial burden, that's for sure. Yeah, and, and that's the the question, too. I mean, we've I sometimes say the worst thing that can happen to most role-playing projects is to get funded, not to fail to get funded. It's better to fail to get funded than be stuck with something that you actually turn out not to be able to do. Yeah. You know, um, that's where, you know, a lot of people just have run face first into it. Now I do run into, well, okay, here's the thing. First was the deadline. Mm -hmm. and, and so if you think about it, crowdfunding doesn't necessitate a deadline. But Kickstarter had one. And Kickstarter pretty much created the model for how it's supposed yeah. to be done for everybody. So everybody thinks, well, there has to be a deadline. Oh, well, so yeah, yeah. That, that's one thing. And another thing was is the notion of excitement and effectively purchase through hype you're buying it because you're excited about it coming out mm -hmm. and insofar and i actually think both of those are a bad thing and both of them are exactly what we were enjoying not having to worry about at the forge the whole idea of release date was out it was like look i'm working on this and thanks for your help and i'm asking no money or anything you know i'm here to chat about it 
maybe learn more about it, maybe have you play the crappy ass play tests that I've got, right? Fine. For free, you know, I'm doing it voluntarily, you're doing it voluntarily, that's fine. So there was no deadline. And a lot of really good games benefited from not promising to be out at Gen Con next year. Because right? you could go through so many yeah. iterations and perfect them over such a lengthy period of time. Especially um, if you're, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, well, especially if you're a cynic like me who thinks that most role-playing games actually were published before they were ready. The issue with Kickstarter, we've got the issue of deadline, which yeah. connotes the whole thing of I ordered it, that me I backed it, which they, by which they, they understand it as I ordered it from your catalog. Yep. You put Absolutely. it, this is your catalog, you put it in your catalog, I ordered it, what's the problem? Where's my thing? And I get that. I don't like it, but I get it. And then um, the other thing which I mentioned, which was that the enthusiasm for the object is through, it's a self-reinforcing enthusiasm of inclusion, right? You, you, yeah. it's, and in a way, it's almost like toxic fandom because you don't actually have the thing. So how can you be a fan of it? But you are a fan of it. You've backed it. You've sunk it. Yeah. Right. yeah. You've sunk money into it. Your name is up there. It's going to be in it. Who else backed it? How many people can I get to back it? Myself. Right? Yeah, I mean, like this whole of... whip up of that is not really a very good thing, if you ask yeah. me. Yeah. It's like a lot of products that they, you know, tell the company will tell you about them early and try to get the hype going. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes those products are really, really late. And sometimes they need to be really, really late. Right. Or they are. And then they're done so half cocked that it's right. Yeah. Well, it's. I think a number yeah. of of. There's also the problem of of treating your first customers as your beta test. Right. So, yeah. you know, you and people. It, a lot of other kinds of activities that we call gaming, particularly mm -hmm. platforms and console stuff and all those things. That's exactly what they do. The early adopters oh, yeah. know that they're working out the bugs. And if you take that attitude to the production of role playing, then people are basically getting, you know, they, they didn't oh, they yeah. didn't sign on for that. They're, right. They're getting your buggy software. Yeah. 